I'm Bob from CWI Performance. Today we're going to talk about putting the Ford Godzilla motor into a factory five car. This isn't our normal stuff, but we do make a lot of parts for the Godzilla for one of our customers. And what we're trying to do is, is put this motor in, fit it, and then build the headers. So the video is really about the headers, but I'll tell you a little bit about the project. So this is the new Ford 7.3 truck motor. This one has this cool eight stack uh, drive-by-wire fuel injection system on it. It's got a modified oiling system so we could shrink up the engine, but these cast iron exhaust manifolds for the Godzilla really doesn't work. This engine's cool because with the cam swap and locking out the VVT, it makes about 600 horsepower and 600 foot-pounds of torque, so it's a lot of bang for your buck. These engines new from Ford Performance are about $7,500, so it's a great deal. We've got these cool powered by Ford coil covers. There's some valve covers under here. Um, this whole front drive's custom, the whole front engine dress. Um, it's kind of a really cool setup. To put this in, we had to put the, the ICT billet universal mounts. This car was set up for a Coyote, but it just didn't work for the Godzilla. We have a T56 Magnum transmission hooked up. The stock mount worked fine for that. We had to modify the tunnel just a little bit, and then Tim and Keegan will walk you through the header process of this car. We built our own header flanges. We use Send Cut Send to make those, and we use vibrant tubing and a vibrant uh, collector. So please like, subscribe, watch the video, check it out. If you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments, and thanks for watching. All right, so we have our Factory 5 Daytona here, and as you can see, not exactly a small block Ford going in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a set of headers for this thing because nobody builds headers for a 7.3 into a Daytona. Okay, so we have our exhaust mocked up to where the factory location was. I used a magnetic angle finder. Found the angle of this body line here. I made it match that right there. Verified our gaps are good, so let's go over to the bench and see what welding materials we have to work with. All right, so here's what we're going to be using to make our headers. So Vibrant makes really nice pieces. And we have a couple of their U-bends, which is just a full U. But these are nice because you can take these and cut them wherever you need to along that radius and get any actual angle that you might need that's going to be an oddball one. We got a couple of 45s. Leftover piece of 90 from the scrap bin, and a straight 90. These are all 304 stainless. So thankfully, never rust and we never have to do this again. Okay, so on this side, we're gonna start with the very back one. And the reason for that is because it's gonna be the most difficult, so let's get it knocked out of the way. As you can see, we got roughly four inches right there to work with, maybe five if we're being generous. So we're gonna take our tightest 90 we have from the scrap bin, reach in here, and mock it up and see where we get. So we gotta go from there, probably do another 90. Honestly, right about there, because that leg's about exactly what I need. And we'll go down into this bottom tube right here. One of the things you're gonna encounter when you build your own set of headers is spark plug clearance. Anybody who's ever messed with headers knows that spark plugs and headers are not friends. So we're gonna go ahead and put this guy in our last cylinder here, put our plug wire on, and make sure that our 90 clears it and doesn't hit it, and we're future-proofing ourselves. Okay. So we're gonna have to go underneath that spark plug wire, because if I put it there, the cylinder is going to go right into it, and that is no bueno. This is going to be a lot and lot of trial and error, but this is also your footwell box, so we don't want to fry its feet. And we want to give ourselves as much room as we can. So probably right about in there is where I'm going to put it. So what we've done here is we set up a guard that so I can slide this along. Give me the three and a half radius I need from here to that line. So just a simple piece of scrap metal and some clamps and sharpie marks. We're set to go.
Now yeah, that one fits. We're gonna have to kick it down quite a bit, but that's okay. Right, right now, we're just still in the mock-up phase. If I had more room, I would do it differently. We don't happen to have more room, and we don't want to fry his foot. So we're gonna come out of here, come up, go over into it. I might take another piece that and bring this out to here. If we rotated this, a little more, make more of a diamond. If we if we hit it clockwise, or I'm sorry, counterclockwise where I'm at, this way, this will be a straight shot into the top here. I could put this one here in the bottom. I could put this one here or here, probably here, and then bring this one First down and into it. You can get a plug in there currently. But when that one's in, it's going to be a trick. You could do it. You come in there, you can get that one. With the exception of, it's gonna have to be tucked like that. If you do that, you got a, a gap right here. So it's gonna have to be tucked hard like this and down. Gonna work. Yeah, I just have to add a touch right there on the end of that. Ninety. Yeah, bring out a touch. That's gonna be hot right there. Not much else I can do about it. Except for throw my sharpie on the ground. much to it. Got our tubes tacked up on one side. We're gonna go ahead and finish weld all of them. Now, a good rule of thumb is you're gonna TIG weld it, measure your thickness, you know, with an actual quality pair of calipers or dial mics or whatever you happen to have laying around. So, 55 thou, I'm probably gonna use about 50 amps plus or minus. You gotta read the puddle as you're going. looks like it's starting to lay flat. You got too much heat. It looks like a caterpillar laying on top. You don't have enough heat. You got to regulate your speed a little bit. Depending upon how you weld as a person, everybody's going to do it a little differently. And that's just my little helper to hold it in place for me. So you're going to want to use 2% thoriated tungsten. We're going to grind that to about a 30 degree tip. If you look over here, we got our fancy Piranha tungsten grinder. I've got it set to the angle I like. You can do 20 or 30 degrees, depending upon personal preference. Now, we should be purging this so that we don't have any sugar in on the inside. The problem is, I don't currently have any way to set up a backup gas system, so we're not going to purge weld it because I don't have the ability to right now. I think if you just take your time and work your way through it, you'd be surprised what people can do. 